Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. This is one of those games is why you come here, basically. Um, games against Auburn, LSU, um, Ole Miss, those big time games, uh, those rivalry games. Those are part of the reason why you come here. And it's certainly part of the reason we do Tider Insider TV, Rodney, that's for sure. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Gary Harris, along with Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. TITV is presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, bottlers of Pepsi products throughout the great state of Alabama. And once again tonight, we're enjoying Pepsi Max, Max Taste, Zero Sugar. I think that's a combination that we can all get behind. This holiday season, make your holidays a little bit brighter. Pick up some great Pepsi products from Buffalo Rock the next time you're at your local grocery or convenience store. Well, Rodney, it's Iron Bowl week. And you and I have been doing this show a long time now. We've previewed a lot of these. It's always exciting, and we've got plenty to get to as far as Alabama and Auburn. But first, let's take a quick look back at last week's Bama win over Chattanooga. Now, the Mox gave the Crimson Tide more than a lot of people thought that they would. It was a close game throughout the first half. In fact, a fumble punt by Chattanooga led to touchdown. It was only 14-3 to at half. Chattanooga led 3-0 at the end of the first quarter, but the Tide found some offense uh, later on. A 47-yard touchdown to Calvin Ridley. Ridley led the Tide with seven catches for 94 yards and the touchdown. Damian Harris broke one in the third quarter, a 25-yard scamper that put Bama up 21-3. And Gary Dieter, a couple of touchdowns. His first touchdown catches since the opener against USC. And Alabama won it comfortably 31-3. But uh, the game was not easy, but it was a big one for Gary Dieter. Yeah, it was a pretty crazy stat line. Three catches, one yard, and two touchdowns. Uh, I don't think that will ever be repeated by any receiver, so hopefully my name will be uh, stetched in stone. You know, you may be right. Three catches, one yard total, because he lost yards in a uh, regular uh, possession mm -hmm. reception. So three three catches, one yard, two touchdowns. Very unique. Never heard of it But he'll before. take those two yeah, touchdowns. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and they were really big. Hey, what about that game? I mean, you know, I guess I picked it 48-6, to six, so I could say I didn't see it coming. But in some ways you could. First of all, I give Chattanooga a lot of credit. They were well prepared. In fact, I thought they had a game plan on offense that Auburn might emulate in terms of keeping the ball away from Alabama. But the Tide uh, offensively struggled a little bit. The offensive line was off and on. I thought the game plan, plan was questionable running Jalen Hurts. But the defense after that opening drive by Chattanooga really shut them down. Yeah, you know, sometimes. You don't want to make excuses, but Gary, when you're talking about coming off games against the likes of Texas A&M, LSU, then you come home and play Mississippi State, and it's sandwiched between games coming up, the rivalry game with Auburn, of course, and then the SEC championship game with Florida. You know, it's just a fact of the matter. It's difficult sometimes to get your players ready mentally and emotionally for these types of games. Ronnie, defensively, shut out LSU. A field goal against Mississippi State, a field goal against Chattanooga. That's six points in the last three games. You just don't see that around the country very much anymore where a team goes 12 quarters of football, three games, and only gives up a total of six points. Yeah, obviously the defense has just been fantastic in terms of, you know, allowing points, not allowing points, Gary turning the ball over, things such as that. And also when you look at it too, as you start looking ahead a little bit, Gary, this Auburn defense, They've given up one rushing touchdown the last eight weeks. Yeah, we'll get into that more. Offensively for Alabama, one of their lowest total game offensive yardage totals, uh, 31 points. Now, they only had 10 at LSU, but 31 points, one of their lower point totals this season. Uh, again, Chattanooga deserves some credit, but I thought offensively Alabama was sluggish. They really were, Gary. They were never in sync. You mentioned that. Well, I tell you, from the start, they, they hit a 23-yard throw to Ridley right off the bat. Jalen Hurts goes about 60 around right in, but he stepped out of bounds. Right. And it just never got in to sink offensively for Alabama in this game. All right, Ryan, let's move on and, and talk some about Auburn. The Tigers have question marks of their own on offense heading into Saturday's game. We're still not sure if Sean White is healthy and he'll, whether or not he'll start at quarterback. Auburn has uh, players banged up in the backfield, but we do know this, as you said, this is a top-tier defense, probably their best in years. It's a unit that ranks at near or the top of many defensive categories, and Coach Saban said it's one of the best he's seen from Auburn since he's been this may be the best defense we played against all year. Uh, this is one of Auburn's better defenses, not to make comparisons that uh, we played against since we've been here. Uh, and I think it starts with their front guys because they're very dominant up front, but they're, 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 they're good in all areas you know, on their team, and they play very well, and they don't make a lot of mistakes, and they're coached very well, and 
Um, they've got a lot of ability, and it's going to be a real challenge for us to control their front people. Well, Auburn is banged up on offense. Gus Malzahn did say today the running back Cameron Petway is expected to play against yeah. Alabama, but there are unknowns at quarterback and at the other running back positions. But Crimson Tide linebacker Ryan Anderson, Ryan, he said it really doesn't matter who's back there. Alabama's got to get after him. I don't think it's going to change the way we prep. I mean, only one of them can play at a time, and either they can run a ball or throw it. So. All right, Rod, let me bring you in here for analysis now. This is an Auburn team that's very capable. They're 8-3. and three. Two of those games came in their first uh, three games of the season. They did lose at Georgia, which cost them a chance to play for the SEC West Championship this weekend. Coming off Alabama A&M, you can't gauge much from that. Sean White didn't play. Jeremy Johnson did. So they've got some question marks on offense. But let's start again with that defense. It, they're really good. Kevin Steele's done a terrific yeah. job there in his first really year He really has. I mean, amazingly good job. You know, I really didn't – I knew that they had the talent there. I think this is the best coaching job Kevin Steele's ever done uh, wherever he's been. So they've done an outstanding job, have amazing talent up front. When you talk about Carl Lawson, the defensive end, certainly a great pass rusher, Gary. He's a guy that has uh, nine sacks, one of the top uh, sackers. There you see Montrevious Adams, number one. He's a dominant beast inside. You know, he's the other top defensive lineman that they have. There's Lawson on the sack. And, you know, they're just really a dynamic duo up front. They're very difficult to run on. They don't give up much yardage. As I mentioned, they've only given up uh, zero rushing touchdowns in the last eight weeks so and only two on the year this is a really dominant defense if it weren't for alabama they might be considered the best defense in the league you know lsu and florida have arguments as well but you're right they're really really good up front on defense and and they can get after the quarterback and stop the run now offensively they run it better statistically than anybody else in the league and they pass it less than anybody in the sec so clearly alabama's the best defense against the run in the conference can auburn run it well enough to have a chance to win, or are they going to have to find a way to throw the ball? Somewhere? Well, I think when you look at them, you know, you really don't know because obviously Cameron Petway, he was averaging 200 yards a game in the month of October, Gary. Uh, he, he leads the SEC averaging 138. He's been out since the Vanderbilt game when he tore that quad. Whether he plays or not, I don't know. Uh, of course, I, you mentioned that Malzahn said he probably would. So they're a little limited. There you see Carryon Johnson, their other top running back. He's been banged up. You know, the threat is a runner. At quarterback, they really haven't had that. Sean White's been okay. Jeremy Johnson's a, a, a decent runner as well. You mentioned that he started the Alabama A&M game. He was 14 and 19 throwing it. Uh, so again, when you look at them, can they run the football? I think it's going to be really, really tough to run the football on Alabama. Yeah, you saw the graphic second statistically in the SEC, but for most of the season, they were the number one rushing offense, and they're very good. But we'll see what they can do against that Alabama defensive front. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, the latest college football playoff rankings are out. We'll look at who's in the top four. You can guess who's number one. And a pair of Alabama players talk about playing with the inevitable distractions that are created by a game like the Iron Bowl. You got to deal with them. Coming up as well, your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the phone number is always 205 348 WVUA. That's 348 9882. Or you can email us at TITV at WVUA23.com or reach out to us on Twitter using the hashtag TITV. Brandon Cameraman will be looking for your tweets. Remember to use the hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with a show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV will return after this timeout. They're always going to be one of the best, if not the best, you know, um, against the run in the country. Their defensive front and their front seven's always uh, near the top. Um, like I said, the biggest thing I think this year for me is just their ability to, to rush the passer. Uh, their two defensive ends are both dynamic. Uh, their internal guys are very good one-on-one. -on -one. And welcome back to Tider Insider Television. Gus Malzahn is looking to even up his career head coaching record against Alabama at 2-2 two and two as the Auburn head coach. Meanwhile, Alabama is looking to remain number one in the college football playoff rankings. Let's take a look. Of course, the Crimson Tide is number one in the latest rankings just released uh, in, within the hour. Ohio State number two, Michigan three, and Clemson is four. So no change in the top four. Louisville obviously falls out of the top five. Washington moves in. And Wisconsin is six. Rounding out the top ten, Penn State, Oklahoma, Colorado and Oklahoma State. Of course, the Crimson Tide uh, just uh, continuing to be where they're going to be if they keep winning, and that is at number one. Well, Rodney, as you know, the emotions will be running high Saturday afternoon at Bryant-Denny Stadium. While the Alabama players relish the opportunity to play in a game with such a great atmosphere, they also have to learn how to channel their emotions. You got to take the energy and use it kind of in a positive way. You can't let it really distract you. You got to take that and use it like, I want to play my best game in this game. Um, so I think you just gotta, you can't really 
let it affect you too much, you got to turn it into positive energy. The one thing that Coach Burns, our position coach, tells us all the time is be where your feet are. You know, wherever you are, all you can control is what's on the green grass, and uh, you can't control the fans, uh, any external factors. You can't even control what the other team does. All we can do is focus on and control what we do. All right, we're going to be running back in for more analysis now. This is more from the emotional end. All right, I know Jalen Hurts and Jonah Williams and, and some of these young players aren't really freshmen anymore. They've been through 11 games. But still, they've never been through an Iron Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how will this one be different for them and the fact that they haven't been through it yeah. before? What do they need to do to well, keep themselves you know, even killed yeah. in this game? And, and I think they will because I think that's just their nature. I think when you look at guys like those guys who are successful as true freshmen, there are reasons for that. And I think part of that is because they know how to deal with things emotionally. You know, the good thing is I think for those guys, especially Jalen Hurts, I know he's gone on the road, done a fantastic job in all these road games. It's a little bit different going down to Jordan Hare. This is a big game. Mm -hmm. for Alabama in terms of the, having it here at home. I think that's very valuable for Jalen Hurts, you know, crowd noise, all of those things, because I'm telling you, this thing gets more intense than people realize. I yeah. think you have to experience it to really understand You know, it. I think a lot of people mistake because for the most part it's a clean game. Yeah. There haven't been a lot of incidents either before the game or during the game, but that doesn't mean that the intensity is not there because, as you and I know, we've been to a lot of them. Uh, the hitting, the adrenaline, it's it's unmatched, and this is no disrespect to Tennessee, which I know a lot of older Alabama fans consider to be the number one rivalry, or the, or the LSU game. But Alabama Auburn, in my opinion, Rodney, is still at a different level emotional for both teams. Well, like you said, I mean, I mean that's why you see the ebb and flow. Yeah, I mean it just changes so much. The intensity is so great that. You know, you see some of the most unusual plays in this game. And remember this game right here where Blake Sims had thrown three interceptions, you know, through his third one in the beginning of the second half, and then he comes back and throws three touchdown passes, and Alabama wins that in a going away. I mean, those types of games, that is because of the intensity and the passion in this game that we see on a yearly basis. And Auburn's been able to stay competitive. Keep in mind, Alabama hasn't won three in a row in the series since Gene Stallings' first three seasons, 90, 91, 92. Of course, Bryant had the nine-game winning streak from uh, – 73 through 81. All right, coming up next, the latest from the Alabama men's basketball team coming off a late game last night in Las Vegas. And next, your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information posted there on your screen is the phone number is 205-348-9882. The email address, TITV at WVA23.com, and you can reach us on Twitter using the hashtag TITV. We're coming back with more right after this. The Alabama men's basketball team is coming off its second loss of the season last night in Las Vegas, 68-60 to Valparaiso. That loss falls an 18-point win on Friday night at Coleman last uh, Friday against Ball State. Shannon Hill had 19 in that game. Kind of shows you how this team is up and down already this season. Shannon Hill, 19 against Ball State, zero against Valpo. Alabama will take on St. Louis in the consolation game of the Las Vegas main event tomorrow night. All right, welcome back to TITV. Rodney and I are ready to take some phone calls. Let's get right to it and uh, lead off with our buddy Harold over there in Aniston. How you doing, Harold? Yeah, how you doing, guys? Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, same to you, man. Hey, man, I wanted to ask y'all. I've been checking out, you know, the uh, recruiting and everything. I know uh, for, the, for the class next year, man, it looks like, you know, uh, I know you said we're in on some defensive line. We probably won't know the signing date. But uh, looking like we got a, a shortage on DBs, too. Are we in on some of those, too? Oh, yeah. They're in on a lot of them, Harold. You know, some of the top ones in the country, several of them will be here this weekend. Sean Wade, who's committed to Ohio State out of Jacksonville, Florida. He'll be here. They've got some other guys that they're recruiting really heavily that, uh, you know, that I think could put together Gary an outstanding, I mean, maybe one of the best DB classes. And they've had some good ones. And also, I know he's worried about the defensive lineman because we talked about with that with him last week. But, Harold, they're in on a lot of really good defensive linemen. It's just a matter of which ones they get. But I, I think you're going to be really happy because I think they're going to put together a tremendous defensive line class. All right, let's stay in Aniston and talk with David. David, welcome into the program. Good evening, man. How are you tonight? Very well. Thank you, David. Well, good. Thank you for my call. I, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think? I'm expecting Auburn to come out and try to throw the ball on our defense Saturday. I don't, I don't think they even believe they can run. Uh, LSU couldn't, and they know they're physical. And I just wanted to see what y'all thought about the. I'm expecting the Tide to win this third game in a row you were talking about earlier, and I want to see what you thought okay. on the game plan might be. All right, David. Well, I'll start off. I I think they're going to try to run the ball. I mean, that's what they do. I mean, that's their personality. I don't think they feel like they can't run it. Now, maybe they won't be able to, but this is a team that uh, they've thrown it enough to keep people off balance. But this is a run-first team. I don't expect them to change their 
entire personality uh, early in the game against Alabama. I could be wrong, but I think they're going to try to establish their yeah. run game. I mean, if they do, I, I, I think that's bad news for them if they come out and they don't try to run the ball because, as Gary said, that's certainly their identity. That's what they do. Now, I agree with you. I do think they're going to take some shots, especially if Jeremy Johnson's a quarterback. He's got a big arm. I think they need to make a few big plays in the passing game to really have a chance against this Alabama defense. He's got a big arm. He was 14 or 19 last week. Of course, it's a lot different Alabama A&M and this Alabama. So, you know, Gary, I, I just think that I agree with him. I do think they're going to take some shots, but I think they've got to try to establish the running game. All right, Dale and Malville, you uh, hold on. We'll get to you coming up after the break. Also, still to come an update on the undefeated Crimson Tide women's basketball team coming off a dominant half of basketball, one of the most dominant halves in program history. And more phone calls, emails. As I said, we'll get to Dale and Malville. Keep it tuned right here at TITV. We've got more phone calls coming up after this. The Alabama men's basketball team is coming off its second loss of the season. Last night in Las Vegas, 68-60 to Valparaiso. That loss falls an 18-point win on Friday night at Coleman last uh, Friday against Ball State. Shannon Hill had 19 in that game. Kind of shows you how this team is up and down already this season. Shannon Hill, 19 against Ball State, 0 against Valpo. Alabama will take on St. Louis in the consolation game of the Las Vegas main event tomorrow night. All right, welcome back to TITV. Rodney and I are ready to take some phone calls. Let's get right to it and uh, lead off with our buddy Harold over there in Aniston. How you doing, Harold? Yeah, how you doing, guys? Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, same to you, man. Hey, man, I want to ask y'all, I've been checking out, you know, the uh, recruiting and everything. I know uh, for, the, for the class next year, man, it looks like, you know, uh, I know you said we're in on some defensive line. We probably won't know the signing date, but uh, looking like we got a, a shortage on DB, too. Are we in on some of those, too? Oh, yeah. They're in on a lot of them, Harold. You know, some of the top ones in the country, several of them will be here this weekend. Sean Wade, who's committed to Ohio State out of Jacksonville, Florida. He'll be here. They've got some other guys that they're recruiting really heavily that, uh, you know, that I think could put together Gary and outstanding. I mean, maybe one of the best DB classes, and they've had some good ones. And also, I know he's worried about the defensive lineman because we talked about with that with him last week, but Harold, they're in on a lot of really good defensive alignment. It's just a matter of which ones they get. But I, I think you're going to be really happy because I think they're going to put together a tremendous defensive line class. All right, let's stay in Aniston and talk with David. David, welcome into the program. Good evening, men. How are you tonight? Very well. Thank you, David. Well, good. Thank you for my call. I, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think? I'm expecting Auburn to come out and try to throw the ball on our defense Saturday. I don't, I don't think they even believe they can run. Uh, LSU couldn't, and we know they're physical. And I just wanted to see what y'all thought about the. I'm expecting the Tide to win this third game in a row you were talking about earlier, and I want to see what you thought okay. on the game plan might be. All right, David. Well, I'll start off. I I think they're going to try to run the ball. I mean, that's what they do. I mean, that's their personality. I don't think they feel like they can't run it. Now, maybe they won't be able to, but this is a team that um, they've thrown it enough to keep people off balance. But this is a run first team. I don't expect them to change their entire personality early in the game against Alabama. I could be wrong, but I think they're going to try to establish their yeah. run game. I mean, if they do, I, I, I think that's bad news for them if they come out and they don't try to run the ball because, as Gary said, that's certainly their identity. That's what they do. Now, I agree with you. I do think they're going to take some shots, especially if Jeremy Johnson's a quarterback. He's got a big arm. I think they need to make a few big plays in the passing game to really have a chance against this Alabama defense. He's got a big arm. He was 14 or 19 last week. Of course, it's a lot different Alabama A&M and this Alabama. So, you know, Gary, I, I just think that I agree with him. I do think they're going to take some shots, but I think they've got to try to establish the running game. All right, Dale and Malville, you uh, hold on. We'll get to you coming up after the break. Also, still to come an update on the undefeated Crimson Tide women's basketball team coming off a dominant half of basketball, one of the most dominant halves in program history. And more phone calls, emails. As I said, we'll get to Dale and Malville. Keep it tuned right here at TITV. We've got more phone calls coming up after this. The Alabama women's basketball team played Lipscomb last Thursday night. It was 39 to nothing before Lipscomb got on the board. 45 to three at half. That's just crazy. In the end, the Crimson Tide cruised an 82-35 win. Alabama's 3-0. They host Georgia Southern tonight. Tips off at 7 o'clock here in, uh, oh, about eight or nine minutes. All right, let's get right back to the phone lines. Let's go uh, Dale and Malville. Thanks for help holding, Dale. You're on TITV. Hey, fellas. Hey, Dale. Uh, Alabama's about to play the, the greatest rivalry, the grandfather of all rivalries of college football and to me you know we're 11 and 0 and i'm a happy 11 and 0 fan right but if we don't win this game it just about erases the whole 11 <laughs> before it so you know i don't want to take nothing away from chattanooga i was there at the game they had some good players but i am really concerned about our power running game i hadn't really seen us establish that power running game all year long 
and against a team like Auburn with that front, I'm a little concerned about it. I, I don't. I still expect Alabama to win the game. All right, Dale. All right, we'll, we'll comment on that. I, I disagree with you a little bit. I think they have established a power running game in a lot of their games. In fact, in SEC games, Alabama's the number one rushing team in the conference, SEC versus SEC, ahead of Auburn. Now, you're right. Last week, that game plan confused me. But I think they will line up. Bo Scarborough should be back. He's 6'2", about 235 pounds. I think you're going to see them attack Auburn's front. I think they will look to establish the running game yeah. in this contest. Yeah, you mentioned the statistics and, and certainly Alabama 270 plus yards a game rushing against SEC competition. They know how to run the football and I think that, uh, I agree with him. I think it's going to be tough sledding against that Auburn defensive front. It's going to be difficult. But I think Jalen Hurts, his ability to run the football, his and I think he's developing more as a passer, uh, made some nice throws in this game down the field. We saw the long touchdown throw to, to Calvin Ridley. He opened the game with a nice throw down the field to Ridley. Against Mississippi State, he made some good throws. So I think, Dell, that you're going to see a, an Alabama team that's going to be able to get some running game going again. Hard to come by, but they're going to be balanced. All right, thanks, Dale. Let's head up to Walker County and talk with Sammy. Sammy, welcome into the program. Thanks, uh, Gary and Rodney. Yes, sir. Uh, and your family have real good uh, Thanksgiving holidays Thank and you. everything. Uh, my question is, uh, this is the 11th uh, game, you know, or going on. It's been a, you know, a great season. But uh, is it too much to ask maybe to see Jalen Hurts play one game with no fumble and no interceptions? Sammy, I don't think it is. I think, I think he needs to be turnover free. I, I think this is the kind of game ball security is the most important thing in the game. Punting's okay. I, I think he can, and uh, I think that's important for Alabama on Saturday, well, not to give Auburn any cheapies. And, and, and in fairness, he did not turn the ball over against Chattanooga. That's I know right. he had the fumble. Alabama recovered right. it. He did not turn the ball over, didn't really come close to throwing an interception. So he did a nice job in that regard. But I agree with you, Sammy. He's certainly got to protect the ball. No doubt about it. All right, thanks for the phone calls tonight. Still to come, one NFL fan base is pretty frustrated with its team's performance and find out why those fans are calling for a game against Alabama. Plus, Rodney and I will take our undefeated predictions into the Iron Bowl. We haven't missed a game this year. We picked Alabama every time. <laughs> it's worked out well. Our picks are coming up next on Tider Insider TV for the Iron Bowl. Well, how often have you seen the We Want Bama signs at sporting events? Fans do it the most, of course, and Bama is the best. But this sign was seen at an NFL game, a Cleveland Browns game. The Browns are 0-11 this season, worst in the NFL. And their fans, I guess, want to match up against the best college team in the land, Alabama, to see where they stand. Rodney, I want to say for the record now, all fun aside, yeah. Alabama is the best college football team in the country. The Browns are the worst NFL team. I don't think that the best college team, Alabama, could beat the worst NFL team, the Browns. I just don't. I agree. So maybe maybe that's why the Browns want Alabama. They want to get a win. But uh, still, it's a compliment to Alabama that NFL fans are flashing that sign. All right, buddy, time for our picks. Uh, it's Iron Bowl week. Uh, we've already talked about the matchup. We've broken it down. Uh, Auburn is a very competent football team, 8-3, and three, Alabama 11-0. What's your prediction? Well, I think, Gary, when you look at this game, it's, it's got the brewings of a really defensive struggle. I mean, both these defenses are outstanding. They're both really strong against the run. Both offenses are really statistically outstanding running offenses. But and I, I think the, the difference in this game, first of all, I think Jalen Hurts has to really protect the football. If Alabama doesn't give Auburn anything, I think it's going to be difficult for Auburn to come by points. I think Hurts can be the difference in the game because I think he's a playmaker at the quarterback position, and I think he's going to be able to make some throws. Gary, I think there's some leaks in the Auburn secondary. Uh, I pick Alabama 24-13. to 13. Again, I think it's going to be a really good defensive struggle. Yeah, I think Alabama's defense is, is the best in the country. Now, whether they're number one in every statistical category, I don't know, but I think they're the best. Uh, I think they're the best team in the country. I think Auburn's a good football team. But I like what Bill Parcells always said, and certainly by this time of the year, you are what your record says you are. Auburn is a good team. I think Alabama's a great team. And can Auburn win the game? Yes. But Alabama would have to help them. If both teams play their best, Alabama wins. Auburn has lost three games for a reason, including one a couple weeks ago at Georgia, when they had everything on the line, everything to play for, and they couldn't get it done against a very average Georgia team. For me to believe they can come into Bryant-Denny Stadium and win on Saturday against an undefeated Alabama team is just too much. I respect their defense, but I like Alabama to wear them down. I just don't see Auburn generating enough offense. 28-6, to six, I got the tie getting it done on Saturday. Well, our beautiful shirts are provided, as always, by the locker room in downtown Tuscaloosa. We match again, did you?
you notice that? Home of the original elephant wear. Get by and see Alec Gatewood and the staff at uh, their downtown location or shop on their website, locker-room.biz. Man, they got some great stuff. Check them out. You'll be glad you did. Also, if you missed the show, you can catch a replay tonight at 1030 or catch it anytime on WVUA23.com. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Good night.